You know, I was going to end with a prayer, but maybe we'll start with a prayer. I told, I told Mike Lindell as he was walking and we bumped into each other, that I actually had the first good sleep of my night of my life last night. So, <laughs> mypillow.com, I'll give him a commercial. I like For those of you that don't know the story of Jericho, many of you do, we're actually standing in the middle of Jericho because we have penetrated the walls of Jericho, right? You know, what they didn't want to do is they didn't want to assault Jericho. What they wanted to do is they wanted to march in peace around there with their soldiers. For those that don't know the story, you should look at the story because this is not just... Somebody asked me, well, where's Jericho? Like as though it was someplace here. It's actually a place in our history and in our hearts. So in the name of the Father and of the Son and of the Holy Spirit, our Father who art in heaven, hallowed be thy name. Thy kingdom come. Thy will be done on earth as it is in heaven. Give us this day our daily bread and forgive us our trespasses as we forgive those who trespass against us and lead us not into temptation but deliver us from evil. Amen. What I want you to know is the people that are standing behind me are only half of my family, but we are all Flynn's and we all fight like a Flynn, right? My, my mother my mother says she named us all after saints, although we were imperfect and we never acted like saints. I have St. Mary, St. Barbara, and St. Joseph with me here today. So, and I guess, yeah, thank you. I love you guys. I love you. We love you. We love you. We, we stand... It's emotional. Thank you. It's really emotional because you spend your you spend your entire life thinking that all you want to do is dedicate your life to something greater than who you are. And if I, if I get emotional or if I shed a tear, don't think for a second that I'm not ready to fight for you, okay? So we we spend our our family, especially, we spend our entire lives looking and seeking something more noble than who we are. And that's really why we're standing here today, because we are in a crucible moment in the history of the United States of America. And, and remember, the courts, the courts do not decide who the next president of the United States will be. Now I will say that there is a there are paths there are paths that are still in play. Trust me, I mean, there, there's a lot of activity that are still that's still playing out. So you know, as my great friend and some of you know Tracy Beans from Uncover DC, she's terrific. You know, she had a great video last night and she said everybody just needs to take a deep breath. I mean, if there's a guy that could be vindictive or could be hateful or scornful, you're looking at him. And I'm not, I'm not, because this is not about, this is not about me, it's not about my family, although family is a major component of who we are. This is about our faith, this is about our faith in each other, this is about our constitution and the fabric of our constitution. Now, and I always tell people, the courts aren't going to decide who the next president of the United States is going to be, we the people decide. People don't know it because we say the Constitution, the Constitution, the Bill of Rights. What does that mean? Well, what I would tell you is go look it up. Go look it up and, and understand it because this nation is going through a historic constitutional crisis right now. And we all know it. Not just those people that voted for Trump. The entire country, the entire world is watching what we're doing right now. And we have got to get this right. 
This actually is not about President Donald J. Trump. This is, this is about the presidency of the United States of America. It is about the fabric of the Constitution of the United States of America. The Constitution, the Constitution is about individual liberties. It's about individual liberties. Okay, our Constitution is about individual liberties. When the Founding Fathers created it, they created it for that purpose. Not about collective things, not about this collective set of institutions that we have around us. But I will say to you, and I will say to America and to the world, you know, when you when you start to say, well, who's at fault? You know, we want to blame somebody. We the people vote for these people. We vote people in and we vote people out. And we got to be thinking about who do we vote out. But our states, the founding fathers were really brilliant. They were brilliant. And they said, we know that there's going to be corruption right here inside the walls of Jericho. They knew it. They knew it. So they created something where the states had responsibility. The people closest to we the people were the state's legislators. That's super important. Super important. If you don't understand that, then walk away from here and make sure that you echo that message back to your hometowns. You've got to do that. We cannot accept, we cannot accept what we are going through as right. Right? right. So what we're gonna do, and I'm gonna I'm just gonna walk through a couple of things because I want a message to be very I want a message to resonate with you today. And it's and it really is uh, it's vital. It's like I say, it's a crucible moment in the history of the United States of America. It's unprecedented. We've never been through this before. So when somebody goes, well, you know, 1861 or the or when the nation was founded or World War One or World War Two, we haven't had this kind of a crisis. This is new. This is new for all of us. This is new for me. This is something that we are all facing. But you know what? In our minds, in our minds, that's where we find fear. Because fear is a is a mental thing. It's something that you have in your in your minds, and you fear things because your mind says, "I'm a, I'm afraid of that," or "I'm afraid of this." But it's in our hearts. It's in our hearts where we truly know what is right. Because in our hearts, that's where we differentiate between good and bad, right? Where we differentiate between darkness and light. And we know that, we know that in our heart. We, it's, a, it's that gut feeling, but it's actually your heart. It's your heart talking to you. Not your mind, because your mind is gonna say, I'm afraid. And what I'm telling you is we need to be fearless as Americans. And we need to be fearless because truth, truth will always triumph over lies. Justice, justice that we're watching play out in space. Justice will always triumph over abuse and fraud. Justice. I mean, all of us know, I mean, you're, again, I'm, I'm sort of a product of an unjust system. And I will stand up here today like I have stood up many places years past. You know, we're all imperfect. None of us are perfect. So I'm not going to stand up here and, and wear my, you know, sh show my faith off of my sleeve. I don't like to wear my faith on my sleeve. I like to wear it internal. But our justice has to triumph. It has to triumph. That's the one thing that makes us different than all other people around the world. And there's many people listening around the world, and there's also people that are here representing different parts of the world. Our rule of law, our rule of law is at risk. That is what makes us different than any other country on the planet. And I've been to six continents standing proudly for this country, you know, serving our, our great military. So. Honesty, honesty. It's a strong word, honesty, right? Honest in all the kinds of arrangements and relationships that we have, honesty, will always triumph over corruption. Why can't these people get it? Why don't these people around the states, around our country get it? I mean, we're only asking to just show us a little transparency. 
Why not recount? Why not look at the signatures? Why not look inside these machines? Why? I mean, why not? What are they afraid of? What are they hiding from? They're hiding from something. They're hiding from something. Honor. Honor is another word that's used probably too often or in the wrong way. We all have honor. We honor our mothers and fathers. We honor coaches. We honor our families. And we have to honor, what we have to do is we have to honor each other and we have to honor our country. We have to honor our country, especially right now. And that means there's going to be sacrifice. There, there already is sacrifice. We probably have men and women serving in our military or all over the world tonight. And they, some of them are in harm's way. And the only thing that they know is they, is they trust the person on their right or their left. They don't even totally understand why they're out there. They're just out there because they love this country. They love this country. The great, the greatness of the American culture, the greatness which is, which is driven into the American soldier, is a soldier who can stand there in the middle of the toughest firefight of his life where somebody is going to try to take his life in one second, and then in a split second, he can go and jump and protect a child from harm, pick that child up, and, and probably take a bullet in his back while he's trying to protect the child. Only in America do we train that way. Only in America do we have that kind of a culture. Only in America does an American soldier feel that way. You represent that. So we're in a battle. We are in a battle. We're in a spiritual battle. We're in a spiritual battle for the heart and soul of this country. I've said that a lot. We're in a spiritual battle for the heart and soul of the country. And we will win. We, we will win. Yeah. We will win. We will win. We will win. We will win because that is the truth. Yeah. That is the truth. That is why we will win. And we're going to win big. Okay, that is why, and the truth, the truth will prevail. And what? And so how do we fight? We fight with our faith and we fight with courage. It's like I said, do not let fear get in the way of us breathing what I call the fresh air of liberty. Nobody will take that from me. You know, and, and I'll tell you, because I'm going to talk a little bit about this media out here, okay? And hey, trust me, I mean, when you've been raked over the coals by the media, like I've been raked over the coals by the media, like my mom said, sticks and stones can break my bones, but names will never hurt me. <laughs> and, 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 and I will tell you, and I've said this before, the media, the media is doing an incredible disservice to this country. All the media. So all you, all the media out there. All I, I'll, I'll uh, call out my, you know, Epic Times. I think Epic Times does a terrific job. Nobody said that right. Epoch or Epic, Epic, right? Epic Times. They do a terrific job. Some of these other media outlets. I mean, the, the, the abuse. When I talk about abuse and corruption and fraud that we've experienced in my family. I mean, if there's a guy that. Could could call this president out? Could do the things that I know that you know that that are going on? It's me. I I refuse to do that because this is not about Donald J. Trump. 
This is about the presidency of the United States of America. It is about the soul of our country, and we are going to get this right. fighting for him. I mean, for a guy that, that should have gone and, and, you know, played golf or run his hotels, he gave up everything. And look at the garbage that they have put through yeah. him through. I mean, look at what this man and his family have been put through. And, and you know, God love him because what he was able to accomplish in our country in the period of time that he has had as the president over the last four years is amazing. I mean, it really, really is amazing. And everybody knows it. All the haters on the left, they all know it. The media, they know it. That's why they continue to target him. And they continue to go after him. But every time they, every time they throw an arrow at him, it is an arrow directed at us. And we cannot allow that. We cannot allow that in this country. So we the people have to continue to fight back. And we fight back. There's, there's walls, and I'll get back, bring it back to Jericho. When the Israelis, when the Israelites, they crossed the Jordan River, the first city that they came upon was Jericho, and it was a walled city. And if you, there you go. That's pretty cool. It is. I mean, that's pretty cool. You know, the guy. Imagine being able to just jump in a helicopter, go for a joyride around Washington, D.C. I love it. I love the fact that he does that. That's what he does because he knows, he knows that the people that he can trust are people that he's never met. And that's you. I mean, he's never met. You know, look at the millions and millions of people, right? Yeah. He trusts you. He trusts you because he knows you know what's going on and you will not allow what's happening to happen in our country. None of us will. It's just not going to happen. And I will tell you one more time, because I've been asked, on a scale of 1 to 10, who will be the next president of the United States? And I say Donald Trump, 10 of 10. I want to leave you with this, okay? First of all, man, I tell you, women, women are going to win. Those women will absolutely be the ones that will take us to that sort of promised land. They really will. They really will. I know my mother's watching us, and she's as strong as they get. Nothing, nothing can resist the power of prayer. Okay, nothing can resist the power of prayer. We have felt it in our families' lives over these last really difficult four years. These, these Jericho walls that we are standing now inside of, this, this, this deep state, look at that.
stage right now. Four boys. more years! Four more years! Woo! So good. Yeah. <laughs> really cool, isn't it? Four more so the metaphor. That's that's serious stuff right there. That's really cool. That's really cool. And you know what? And and I thank him for doing that for for uh, for really recognizing you all and what we're doing here today in Washington D.C. I'm going to use a metaphor because Jericho, we're inside the walls of the deep state, okay? And there is there is evil and there's corruption and there's and there's light and truth. We're going to get to the light. And we're going to get to the truth. And 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 us inside we're, of this barricade, we're going to knock those walls down. Okay? We're going to knock those walls down. So be proud. Be proud as Christians. Be proud as patriots. And what we what we do is we give witness today to our faith in God, our love of country, the United States of America, for our Constitution and for our president, Donald J. Trump. God bless America. Thank you very much.